Okay, welcome to our brand new series for the love of Star Wars, where each week we bring in a friend from the YouTube community to talk about a particular piece of Star Wars media they absolutely love. It could be a film, an episode of a TV show, or even a documentary. Now, our first guest for the series is your friend and ours, Universal Toy Collector, Stu. Hello, hello. Stu. Good to have you hello, back. Hello, hello, hello. Are you well? Uh, yeah, thank you. I appreciate the invite, and uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Good. Um, this series has really come about uh, as there's been a little bit of negativity towards Star Wars lately, and we want to bring back the positives mm. by talking through the best bits with our guest. Yeah. So, Stu, what beloved Star Wars film, episode, or media have you chosen to talk about this week? Well, I have gone for a, um, an episode from Star Wars The Clone Wars. It's from Season 5. It is Episode 16, and it is called the lawless nice. what great episode. an episode that is absolutely, absolutely fantastic yep definitely it was a little fact i'm going to do my facts now uh written by chris collins who is also a staff writer on the highly acclaimed tv show the wire among other things and this was directed by brian kaylin o'connell who has worked on visuals for unbreakable the mummy pirates of the caribbean and lots more really this so basically what you're saying adam is that they are people who are talented in their field and they know how to tell a story and direct. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> exactly that. Exactly that. Look, <laughs> to, uh, to prove how good this was, IMDb has a rating of 9.7 out of 10, which is the highest wow, wow. rating of this season. Wow. So nice. um, let's get into it, Stu. What is it that you love about this episode? Just the storytelling. Um, the action in it is absolutely fantastic. Um, you know, from the start, it's on set on Mandalore, and um, it's Darth Maul and Savage, and they've literally just taken over. Um, oh, what's it called? Mandalore. Yeah. Um, they disposed of Death Watch, um, so they are they are running it. But they've got the puppet, haven't they? That is, is it Almac? Yeah, and he's the president. So they're they're you know working through him. He's the puppet. He's the face mm -hmm. of the people. These guys are pulling the strings behind. And um, yeah, and then you get that awesome scene at the end um, <laughs> where Maul and Savage take on um, Darth Sidious. That yes. is absolutely quality. But what I like about it is is how it got to that point, you know, of, of the story. And, and, and I just thought it was absolutely fantastic. The whole story is, is brilliant. Yeah. I mean, like you say, there, there is a lot to like about this. You know, you get. Yeah, there's. There's death, there's lightsaber battles. Obi-Wan mm. sort of out there doing something a little bit out of the ordinary for him and for, and yeah. for the Jedi, you know, going yeah. against the council and whatnot. Mm. We see Bo-Katan, we see lightsabers, yeah. we see darksabers. It's, yeah. yeah, it is yeah. fantastic. Everything. Martin, what about you? You like this one, don't you? Yeah, I mean, for those eight people that watched our channel when we first started the YouTube channel, um, we did a series called the top 11 Clone Wars episodes and this was firmly in my top 11 um, and for the very reason that you guys have just said it's got absolutely everything you want in an episode of Star Wars um, I, I, I can honestly go on about this episode for hours so you two might have to jump in and tell me to shut up but <laughs> yeah what what is you know instead let's you know before we get into specifics I, I can't honestly say that there's a bad moment in this entire episode the way it's directed no. The way um, the the characters um, act, the way the you know the the dialogue, the the special effects or the animation, I should say, um, yeah. everything, absolutely everything about it. And to Stuart's point, um, it, it's it, it's almost like um, you've had this build up of this amazing story for I think since season three when you you heard that Darth Maul was back, all the way th up up into this crescendo at the end of this episode, and then you think, yeah. You, oh, this is how it's going to end. Um, but, you know, it doesn't. It goes on and on. It's just a fantastic story, the story of the return of Darth Maul and his obsession with mm. Obi-Wan. And, yeah, yeah. It's, it's absolutely fantastic. I love this episode. Yeah, for sure. Um, so picking a scene or a, a favourite, you know, piece of dialogue or anything, is there anything from this that so in particular I've, I've got stands three, out? Th there's three things that stand out for me, and I'll, I'll probably do them in, in order. Yeah, the politics of, of the episode is absolutely fantastic. So you've got Mandalore, which is a neutral uh, planet. Um, so that means the Jedi can't interfere because 
because they're neutral, so they can't really get involved. I think the way that was written, I think, was absolutely brilliant. Um, spoiler alert here. The death of Satine, that took me back. I was like, what has just happened here? I wasn't expecting that. Yeah. You know, when, when Maul was saying to him, oh, you know, I'm not going to kill you, but I'm going to make you blah, blah, blah. And he was goading him all the way through that scene. Yeah. And, you know, they're, they're backwards and forwards with each other. And, you know, it takes a stronger person to resist the dark side and to overcome it and stuff like that. And and then, you know, you could tell that Maul was getting really peed by that and his, his anger. And then he just comes out and says, yeah, well, I'm not going to I'm not going to kill you. Hmm. And then he, he, he stabs um, Satine. And then it's just the way he just nonchalantly sits back down on the throne as if to say, yeah, take some of that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and only one, not only one, blimey. <laughs> oh, um, oh Obi-Wan. Obi-Wan just sat there and he, he was just like, how he didn't go go for him, I don't know. The restraint he must have had and, and the and the um, the um discipline not to have, 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 have attacked him because that's that would have played right into Maul's hands and that's what Maul wanted. Exactly, um, and yeah. then you've got that scene at the end where he's sitting there and he goes, oh, I've never felt a presence like this since. <gasps> Master! Like that. And he just, oh, just incredible with that scene yeah. between those three, that fight scene. That, that is an animated animated lightsaber battle and it was a lot better than what we had in the acolyte incredible <laughs> yes do you know what i mean yeah it's yeah just insane it was a fantastic episode and i know martin said that it was in his top 11 i think for me i'm going to make the bold claim and say that today is my number one episode wow mm. yeah yeah can't can't argue too much with that you know it's like you say it's up there for sure one way or another mm. uh for me, yeah, the highlight of this this episode, you said it, it's the battle at the end, the lightsaber battle. Yeah. The the sinister Darth Sidious, like how uh it's just brilliant. Um the way he the way he is, it's exactly everything you want him to be, I suppose, isn't it? Yeah. But um yeah. but going back to what you were saying about uh Maul goading Obi Wan. Yeah. That's a, you know, that's an, a sign of how strong obi-wan is as well i suppose isn't it yeah he, he doesn't yeah, fall definitely. for it even though most people would and it's it's just mm. yeah yeah great i mean great but then, choice, when, choice, when you say choice, that you kind of you wouldn't have blamed him if he did do you know what i mean no. yeah and it's when she said and she said oh you know I've, I've always loved you sort of thing i was like oh gosh because that must have been hard for him to hear because jedis aren't allowed to love are they it's not in mm. there you know they they've they're very disciplined in that they, you know, they have to sort of like disown everything and, and stay, you know, away from that kind of thing. But yeah, I, de- I agree. I, I think, yeah. I think in that moment um, where, you know, he stabbed Satine, most people, as both of you have said, would, you know, be right. I'm going to give this a good go. How dare, you know, how dare he do that? But I think, I think the conclusion you come to at the end when he doesn't do anything and he just sort of looks at Maul and accepts the situation of what happened is Obi-Wan in the entire of the Star Wars saga is the model of a Jedi Knight, should what a Jedi yeah. Knight should be. Um, yeah. He is the shining light of what the Order used to be um, and what the Order should have been in the future. Um, and yeah. At that moment, all I could think about during that scene when I watched it earlier today for the hundredth time is uh, <laughs> Qui Gon Jin, his master, would have been absolutely yeah. proud of him in that moment because, yeah, if of all the Jedi, in my in my opinion, that we've ever seen on screen, whether it be animated or live action, was how the Jedi have always been, you know, spoken about in stories and and uh, in the past and in the golden age, if you like. Um, yeah, and Obi Wan being his Padawan has moved on and become that legacy of what a Jedi Knight should be. Uh, yeah. So, so yeah, I, I agree with you both of you that, that, that scene is absolutely. I mean, he, he wasn't an angel in, in any sense of the word. I mean, you know, he did, you know, disobey the order every now and again and, and mm. went off and did things on mm. his own, like he did mm. in, in this episode that we're talking about. Mm. But when you look at him all the way through the Clone Wars, I think he had such a rough deal of it every single time. In every season, there was a there was an episode or two where he was taking an absolute beating. He was the full guy, and do you know what I mean? And yeah. It, so, it, yeah, I what, I, I what what I like about the fact that he you know he's not an angel and he breaks the rules every now and again is again if you go back to Qui Gon, he was renowned um, 
by the Jedi um, Council yeah. being a rule breaker because he didn't yeah. want to do what the the modern dogmatic Jedi wanted him to do. And as Obi Wan oh. says in the Phantom Menace, I think you know if you if you followed the rules, you'd be on the Council. Um, yeah. So and and also he's been obviously hanging around Anakin for quite a few years and he's a number one rule breaker um, yeah yeah in Star Wars so I I kind of I kind of like that he's a bit of a rule breaker um in a way because it, it it's almost like the two biggest impressions on his life have, have, have yeah you know have made him a bit like that um so yeah yeah but again we're talking about layered storytelling here aren't we um we're talking about stuff that you pick up on that's been layered and layered on top of each other so that when a character yeah makes a decision like he did then you 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 instantly accept it and you don't question it um because exactly it's, it's what you call character development mm, mm. and i think and i think uh, the clone wars has got a lot of in my eyes i think it's, it's got a lot of character development through the for the whole series you know from um season one all the way through to season seven the development of the characters is just spot on Mm. You know, I mean, Absolutely. even from Darth Maul and Savage, you know, the way the, the way those two were when they first come back into it, and and then where they are now, so to speak, you know, yeah. I, I just, you know, then you've got Bo Katan, her stories developing and, and her characters developing. Do you know, it's it's just incredible. It, you know, it's fantastic writing, and, and you know, I, 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 that's why I really enjoyed it. I mean, and the, for, if it wasn't for the Clone Wars, I don't think my appreciation of the prequels would be as 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 high as it is or as good as it is because after the clone wars i've gone back and and watched the the, the prequels in a you know happier place sort so to speak yeah yeah yeah, yeah. a lot a lot yeah. of people have said that haven't they yeah we yeah. we've said it um we when we were doing our uh top 10 i think the main thing that came up dare we say it was uh puts more meat on the bone yeah uh, that's, that's something we <laughs> yeah, all yeah, that's absolutely. something we always mentioned absolutely. and it is it is true isn't it you know you go back and watch yeah. those prequels and after watching the clone wars you think oh yeah yeah mm. this this all makes so much more sense what about dialogue then was there anything said in this in particular that that stood out to you yeah yeah it, it when um Palpatine, well, or like Palpatine or Sidious walked in and, you know, he said, oh, I'm glad to see. Master, I am most impressed to see you have survived your injuries. I used your training, Master, and I have built all this in hopes of returning to your side. Hmm. How unfortunate that you are attempting to deceive me. Master? You have become a rival. And stuff like that. And it's just the dialogue that he has. Mm. Um, when Savage dies, he turns around and says, oh, you know, the rule of two. Um, and you are no longer my apprentice. You've been replaced. That is so powerful. Mm. And for Maul to hear that, because all he ever wanted to do was serve Palpatine. And he... He blames Kenobi for, you know, for that. And he could have been by his side when, um, well, like you say, in, you know, he's, um, what is it, season seven. He, he senses what's going on sort of thing. He could have been there. He could have been his, do you know what I mean? That could have been him. Yeah. And I think he's uh, kind of held that against Kenobi all the way through from, you know, when he comes back into it. But yeah, so the, 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 the dialogue was very powerful between, um, well, from Palpatine anyway, or, or, or Darth Sidious. I yeah. love that. Yeah, it, it, like you say, it was very, very well, well written, and yeah. uh, a lot of great characters showing up. Really, you know, we we yeah. all love Maul, don't we? I think. I think. Oh, I, I yeah, think Maul's yeah. brilliant. Um, yeah. So yeah, yeah. To see more of him, it's great. Martin, anything, anything to add? Um, well, I mean, uh, uh, in terms of scenes, because I haven't given you my favourite scenes yet, if you don't mind. Um, no, carry on. Sorry, no, I, um, I, to I mean, no, that's that's fine. Um, I've got a couple of them sort of overlap with what Stu said. Um, the the whole meeting of the Jedi. Uh, well, the, you know who was there? I think it was Yoda and um, Ki Adi Mundi, wasn't it? And uh, yeah, yeah. And they 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 saw the hologram from Satine, and uh, you know they said they'd never get approval from the Senate um, in order to to go to Mandalore and uh, I thought again you know to Stu's point you know this just is an amazing small little probably 
nine uh, what forty second scene that again gives more meat on the bone to Palpatine, yeah. Darth Sidious's overall plan to um, get rid of the Jedi um, by turning them into puppets of the Senate and no longer you know yeah. followers of the Force. So, and it's just you know little moment like that is just what I yearn for in Star Wars, and, and it's just such a great moment. And the scene where um, you, you see a quick out shot of the Senate and then it comes to Palpatine and there's a camera pan yes. around the front of his yeah. face and he's yeah. using the force yeah. and to, to sense what's going on on Mandalore. And he's just like, you know, prepare my shuttle. Tiny moment, absolutely tiny, but so, yeah. so much lore in that. So much, um, I don't know, context to things we've seen in the prequels about because we just saw Palpatine the politician mostly in the first two films so we, we never really yeah. saw him as Darth Sidious all that much so we, we kind of got to see a little bit of him walking the fine line and for him to take the risk to go to Mandalore to because he could be exposing himself by doing that but he feels this is such an important problem to take care of e.g. Maul and um savage oppressed that yeah. he's, he's got to take the risk to get to mandalore and you know get rid of the problem because they could cause his overall plan a massive issue i thought yeah i mean he he, he could have sent dooku yeah yeah absolutely yeah couldn't he yeah, you know absolutely. so and uh, for him to do it himself when, when he said oh you know prepare my shuttle and then you see the shuttle like coming to mandalore it lands the, the ramp comes down the two guards like and then he just like waves his hand and they've choked and stuff like that it's just mm -hmm. the way they've done it is just yeah. insane yeah. and like i say it, it, it's an animated series and mm. oh yeah, yeah it's just it's just i love it it's absolutely fantastic um uh, yeah i mean yeah it's it's not only a great episode but it's a great series in general i think that's something we've definitely oh, yeah, always yeah. said isn't yeah. it it's just um, amazing mm. um it, it, it's so nice to see um bo katan um, in these, not just this episode, but other episodes in the Clone Wars, because you yeah. watch you watch her story, and even in, when it gets into the Mandalorian, you feel like if you've seen the Clone Wars, you know Bo Katan. And I think I think normally the way it would go is you'd have a live action character, and then they'd make an animated series, and then you'd see that animated character in yeah. animated form. But obviously this way yeah. around, it's animation first, and then you see her in live action, and yeah. It's it, doesn't it incredible that they have this sort of cuboid animation style for the Clone Wars? But as soon as you look at the character, you think that's Katie Sackhoff straight away. Yeah, yeah. And and it's so such a dichotomy seeing it from that that way around. It's something that well, I, that's probably why they've got her to voice the character because mm. of the way she's kind of looked. So then maybe that maybe that's why. Yeah. But I have to say when they because I think she she appeared in a couple of um, seasons of Rebels as well, didn't she? Um, she did. Yeah. By yep. time. Yeah. When when she came into the Mandalorian and you know you see her for the first time in live action, I was just like, wow, mm. absolutely wow. And it's weird, isn't it, that you get excited to see an animated character brought to life, yep. and you know, in live action. Yep. You know, it's been the same with Ahsoka, I guess. But absolutely, but Bo -Katan, I, I mean, I like Katie Sackhoff anyway, but I just think she's a great character. And there's a lot of character development in her, you know, in her story when 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 you see her because she started off with Death Watch, didn't she? Yeah. So yep. she was part of yeah. that and then she was against her sister yeah and it made it, it did make me wonder because i think it was it corgi who went in and rescued her rescued satine oh, and yep. called satine mm -hmm. auntie but then didn't call um Bo Bo -Katan Katan auntie because yeah yeah i thought yeah. it would have been a, interesting been yeah i didn't pick well, up but... on that Stu. yeah yeah, that's a really good point. yeah 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 i think i think yeah. um if you've watched the clone wars and you've watched rebels and you see Bo Katan, you you see that her because in The Mandalorian, you're not sure of her intentions. But if you've watched The Clone Wars and Rebels, you always know that her intentions is the best for Mandalore. When, so, yeah. so if you were to watch The Clone Wars and Rebels and then watch The Mandalorian, you'd know, even if you weren't sure what her intentions were, you, you'd probably think, well, it's going to be good because all she's ever tried to do is the best for Mandalore, not for herself. Yeah. So, so, yeah, it's a, it's a great, great point you make about, you know, animation into live action. And uh, if you haven't quite followed the animation, you, you're at a bit of a disadvantage, really, um, yeah. about the character. Um, and I have one more, sorry, one more favourite scene. Sure, no, <laughs> quite a few favourite yeah. scenes. Um, uh, I think, uh, obviously, we've both talked about the the Darth Maul um, and Darth Sidious and Savage Press fight. Um, yeah. I mean, wow. I mean, it's incredible. And... I, as soon as he ignites those two lightsabers, uh, Darth Sidious, and he sort of drags them along the floor, 
and uh, then starts dueling with them, you know, both hands, like blocking their double sided lightsabers. It's just absolutely superb. And yeah. like, you, like you said, Stu, I mean, if only we could have something like that in live action. Um, it, it's, it, you know, nothing has come close to really any of that sort of stuff in years now. And it's um, it's such a shame because I, I, I think the last time you saw something like that must have been phantom menace mm. with Revenge Maul himself Sith. because i mean yeah. I, I i thought ray park I, I thought he played the part absolutely superbly mm. and I, I really did but we've all heard ray park talk and he's he's definitely not a darth Maul <laughs> type kind of no. character is he no, you no. know it sounded like yeah. david beckham yeah so we didn't want that <laughs> but I, I think sam Whitwear did a fantastic job of, of voicing Maul. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely he brought out every emotion in his yeah. voice mm. when he got angry yeah you know to the the subtle little tones in his voice when he was like talking quietly, but menacingly. Yeah. Again, just incredible, incredible writing and incredible yeah. storytelling. Yeah. It was, yeah. It was excellent. Really good. And to, Yeah. You're right. The casting as well, you know, to, yeah. to cast those guys to, to do such a great job of, uh, of performing those roles uh, that, mm. you know, essentially makes them, makes it like they wouldn't be out of place in, in the actual films. So, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Now, all in all, then, Stu, what makes this feel like Star Wars to you? Everything. Yeah, I, I've got to say everything. The, the 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 storytelling, whether it's the um the, the politics involved in it, um they 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 they're true to Star Wars lore. There's lots of action. There's an awesome lightsaber battle, and it's just characters that we love. It's characters that we've we've got to know over a prolonged period of time and they've, you know, they've been allowed to grow on us. We've been allowed to see these, you know, characters develop over a course of, of time. And and I, I think, you know, it, it, for me that, like I say, that has got to be my number one. I mean, there's a lot of good episodes in, in, in the series um, yeah. overall for the seven seasons that they did. But for me, it, it was just absolutely brilliant. And, and the, I think the only thing, that I would say that I was kind of a little bit left frustrated with um, was the ending because you don't see Darth Maul. You don't know what happens to Darth Maul after that. Cause I think his story then goes into comic book. Yeah. Yeah. Which right. I'm like, no, I would have loved to have seen what he had planned for him. And I would have loved to have seen that hmm. visually, not have to read it or look at it in a comic. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I think so that was, that was it, but everything else, it was, it was just Star Wars to a T and that's, from people who know Star Wars, who get Star Wars, who appreciate Star Wars, who can tell a good story. You don't need anything else. It was just all there. They built on everything that was being done previously to that, and they've just put it into this perfect episode, in my opinion. So, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, yeah, to to echo really what you've, what you've said, uh, but with my opinions as well, like the characters, yeah. It's a it's a case of building building those and getting to see more of them, but also the great lightsaber battle for me is what really did it. Uh, made, yeah. Makes it feel most like Star Wars, but yeah, the story, the darkness, uh, the peril that they put you in, and or they put the characters in, I should say. But yeah, um, yeah, uh, fantastic episode. But Martin, yeah, oh, okay, um, you have, you'd have to tell me to shut up. <laughs> If I go on too long, but um, okay, again, we're at risk of repeating all of what we said several times. Um, the the visual style of this episode and, and the Clone Wars in general, but mostly this this episode, I think, is if you were to watch the prequels and then pop this on straight afterwards, you'd think the same director had had directed this. You know, you've got the, mm. the pan zooms, you've got the the, the wipes, you've got. You've got the angles of the camera when the when say Sidious is walking down the ramp of the shuttle. You know, every, little moments like that that you don't recognise at the time, but subconsciously you're used to seeing because you've seen it in Star Wars for years. Those those little details are really really important. Um, you know, Darth Maul sensing Darth Sidious. Um, it's something yeah. that we've seen before, but. Again, we don't instant. We instantly say, "Oh, um, I feel a presence, a presence I've felt since." Yes, of course, we recognise that because it's a line that Vader says in mm. the New Hope. But, but mm. 
the way the way um you know the sound effects and um the the, the way he's sort of he's quizzically looking those are the little things i think that um that make star wars star wars it's not i think uh, dave filoni once said that you know the x-wings and the lightsaber battles and all that that's fantastic that's great um and that is definitely an ingredient to star wars but yeah. it's it's the visual style it's the it's the the way that characters act it's the it's the dialogue it's it's the layered storytelling as we said earlier it's all those that you throw in a blender and those are the things that subconsciously make you think i'm watching something that says this has got star wars written on it it's mm. um it, it, it's it's so good and 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 i mean this episode i mean i'll quickly pop back into that lightsaber battle you know you, you have a character like darth sidious and you know he's an e- he's evil you know him he's the emperor from return of the jedi he's really evil and you know throughout the prequels up into revenge of the sith you know he turns into this absolute monster by the end but you don't mm. really see anything but prior to that and to see him and let's be honest he's playing with darth maul and and savage oppressed during that fight yeah. he, he's under no illusions whatsoever he's gonna win this fight and just the way he plays with him i, I just think that's 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 it's riveting when he's fighting without fighting if that makes sense so when he's just yeah walk, moving aside just to dodge lightsaber um uh slashes from from maul and yeah. uh you know and when he finally has to get serious because darth maul's got two sabers on him you know he, he literally dispatches maul within seconds it, it's you know he's like i've had yeah. enough of this now and that that's excellent action to watch and we can all say oh that's brilliant oh wow the 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 choreography of that lightsaber fan battle was fantastic but it's the psychology of it for me it's it's the yeah it's i'm smiling with an evil grin knowing that any moment he's gonna he's gonna like say right enough's enough I'm, i've I had enough of this i need to get back and do some politics do, yeah. do you know watching that i was worried when i watched that for the first time that he was actually going to kill more yeah. oh, like, yeah. oh god yeah. no this is where he's going to meet his end this is where he dies yeah yeah, yeah. but um yeah but, yeah. Agreed. yeah yeah i mean and and I mean, yeah i mean it's, it's such a great episode that Stu's chosen um and anybody who hasn't who's watched this episode of our us talking about it and hasn't seen it already you're an idiot because you need to go you need to stop this at the beginning <laughs> go and watch it and then come and back too late for that it's too, too late, late for that, that. we spoiled the but whole going thing back but to, going back to visuals when you said when you know when they 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 um obi-wan and bo-katan and the, the troops are there and that like you say that shutter door opens and you've got that oh. battle going on in the background didn't even hmm. mention that Stu. that is... no no that's why i thought i brought it up but yeah, yeah thank you i just completely insane. forgot yeah i think i think because there's so much great dark side action in this episode that yeah i forgot yeah. about that but yeah you're when they're fighting in that corridor and obi-wan and, yeah and it turns and they the blast doors open and yeah. there's all those explosions going on. And he's just stood there with his lightsaber to his side. And it's, it, I'd have a poster of that on my wall. It's that good. It's, yeah, that it's, was, it's, that was insanely good. It's very Clone Wars, insane. isn't it? It's, it's what you yeah. see throughout the whole, the whole series of the Clone Wars, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And I know a lot of the dialogue in Star Wars can be cheesy and has been extremely cheesy. But I think in this particular episode, I, I can't say that there was a one cheesy line or two or or or, or anything like that and i know she said i've always loved you but that that was her last words Mm. i mean that that's not cheesy that's just pure emotion yeah absolutely Mm. do you know what i mean and i I just loved everything about this episode and i just yeah i I can't you know echoing what martin says if you haven't seen it you you go go and see it go and watch it it's just (laughs) yeah it's it's great yeah yeah. but but message one of us it doesn't matter which one of us so that we you don't want to watch all the clone wars we'll give you the episode numbers that you have to watch because there's about five or six episodes before this episode that leads up to this episode yeah. and they're not all in an or- yeah. in order are they Stu? so um are they not no they're not no because it starts off with uh, the night sisters trilogy where uh, uh massage ventress is it's revealed that darth maul's still alive and then well, um yes well yeah i was gonna say don't, don't spoil too much because if people do yeah, want yeah. to yeah, yeah, do want to uh, reach out for that uh, yeah. episode list, then then we don't want to spoil it. We've already spoiled the crap out Maybe, of this one. I'll put but... it in the description. <laughs> I'll put it in the description. Um, but yeah, yeah it's good so, idea. I'm sure anybody who's good. watching this would have seen it, but just in case. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Good. Uh, and even if you have seen it, watch it again. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Uh, we all have, yeah. Excellent, excellent stuff. Um, well, thank you, Stu. Uh, it's been no, an absolute you. pleasure having you on to talk about this. You can see how passionate you are. 
uh, talking about it. Um, what have you got coming up on your channel? Anything? Anything much? Well, I, I, I have. I've got a new star, um, series starting at the end of um, August, and it's called What Made Star Wars Great. Now, funny enough, I, I think me and Martin, we had a conversation didn't we a, a few weeks back, and you were explaining to me about this one, and I was like, oh, okay, well, I've got something similar planned. Um, it, basically, it, we have had a lot of negativity um, around Star Wars, especially like the last last few months. And look, listen, rightfully so, rightfully so. And I wanted to, you know, and what gave me inspiration for that was watching your um, episode on um, on episode seven, you know, when you did your reviews. And for me, Martin is a guy that tries to uh, stay so positive with Star Wars. He looked crestfallen. He looked broken. He couldn't think of anything positive really to say about that episode. It was a struggle. Was like, yeah. It, yeah, it was it, it, for, the, for the pair of you. And I was like, wow, okay. So that's why I, I, I kind of come up with the idea. And it, it's not going to be talking about one particular thing. It's going to be what made Star Wars great to start with. What was it that sucked you in to Star Wars and why did you we fall in love with Star Wars? So again, like you, I'm going to be getting guests on uh, once a week. And we're just going to be having a, a, a discussion about Star Wars and, you know, what made it great for them? What was it that stood out for them? You know, and uh, we go right from the beginning all the way through to probably, um, I don't know where, but it won't involve the Acolyte. So, uh, yeah. I mean, people might like the Acolyte. They might want to talk Some about it. And that's, Some people that's do. Some people do. Yeah, that's, yeah. yeah, that's, yeah, but, um, that's yeah. great. Yeah. If, if people like it, well, like it. But, um, sounds amazing. Yeah. Yeah, no, it does sound brilliant. Um, but as far as this one goes, you picked an absolutely fantastic episode. I no, can't personally wait to see what others have picked moving forward as we carry on with this yeah, series. Um, thanks out there for watching. You know, Please uh, like the video uh, if you did enjoy it and subscribe if you haven't already. And let us know in the comments what you love about this particular episode uh, I'm off to find out what it is that Palpatine's going to do with Darth Maul. So we'll catch you in the next one. See you later. Bye. Ta-da. Thank you.